All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. Thursday night Knicks. And the Knicks are absolutely terrible. This was supposed to be the lighter part of the schedule. This was supposed to be the games at home that get you back on track. It was supposed to be a stretch where we feel good about ourselves, rip off some wins, and 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 you know th- things start going our way right before we get on the West Coast, which just wasn't meant to be, man. One hundred two to ninety one, and it wasn't even that close. It wasn't even that close. The Knicks got smoked. Don't believe in the fake comeback. Knicks post-game live presented by Prize Picks. I'm annoyed. I'm pissed off. I was at the Garden Tuesday night. Me and JD were there. Couldn't beat the Timberwolves. JD, you you had asked, asked, was this a must-win game? Well, Which one of these were must-win games? I said, well, it's a Charlotte one because... You know, we got to think about tiebreakers and it's the East and whatnot, but couldn't win that game. So then, yeah, the next one became a must win. Couldn't win that one. So, yeah, tonight was a must win. And we didn't even show up. My guy Mitch did. Blockdest showed up. RJ had his moments. But I don't know where you even want to start. I mean, do we even want to talk about stats tonight? Because it was that bad. You want to talk about the combined 15 points from Kemba, Julius, and Evan Fournier. You want to talk about, despite going to the line 36 times, going 66% from the charity stripe, once again, you can't hit your free throws. Do we want to talk about turning the ball over, and not just turning the ball over, but... This other the, allowing this team to score points off of turnovers, 19 points off of 15 turnovers. You want to talk about the offense? 23% from three. No rhythm, no ball movement. I mean, absolutely abysmal. When it counted, once again, you had nothing from your bench. Burks, where you at? Quickly, where you at? I, I don't the, the, the fourth quarter comeback was meaningless for me because I already knew they weren't going to do it. It was just getting your hopes up for nothing. So here we are, 22 and 24. This was supposed to be the lighter part of your schedule before you go run the gauntlet. Now, maybe you go to L.A. and, and, and get a win o- over Westbrook and the Lakers, who, who are equally as bad as the Knicks. Maybe, maybe you get that one and you feel good about yourself. But you're, you're 11th in the East. You're six, almost six games behind the sixth-place Cavs. You think you're going to catch them? So this Nick team right now is in no man's land, bro. It starts at the top. And at the top, yeah, you wanna if you want to look at the coach, we can look at the coach. But I'm I'm looking at the best player too, man. I'm looking at the best player, the y- your max player, and I'm looking at a guy who's who's mentally cooked. Mentally cooked. I gave him a bly. I I I I I I didn't want to believe that it was no fans in the seats that made this guy turn into an all-star last year. But clearly that had a major impact. On this guy's performance. Because right now, I don't even know who this guy is. That's wearing number 30 on the team. And that's supposed to be leading the team. But there's, there's so many there's so many ways we could dissect this, man. Right, give me some of your thoughts on this thing. So many ways you can dissect this, bro. Yeah. Man. This, this, this may end up... We may look back at this season. And this homestand... You know, you talk about individual you know, bad losses throughout the season. You go back to the Orlando games and, 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 you know, I thought tonight is right up there. Um, Tonight might actually be the worst loss of the season. 
just because at the point of the season that that it, that it came, it came tonight after you lost two at home, uh, right before the trade deadline, second half of the season. So this was important. They need they needed to have this game, and the total opposite happened. Not only did they did they lose, as you mentioned, they were a no show, and so. You know, when you, when I look at it, I'm looking at first the front office. You know, let, let, we can go in order here, right? It starts at the top. To me, the front office in terms of, you know, this it, it's obvious this roster is discombobulated. And I think that's the word because there's just not a great mix. Um, there's not a, just a good mix of players that are complementing each other's skill sets. So it's obvious at this point the Knicks need a point guard. Because they're they're they refuse to run the offense through RJ. So if you're not gonna run the offense through RJ, when he shows you that he can have the ability to play make, not be a point guard, but at least your best option currently yeah. until you get that point guard, then this front office, which has a few weeks, is gonna be interesting if this type of game tonight, this type of homestand, does Leon look now at this situation? This could snowball fast, CP. Because the schedule does not get any easy. Not at all. So to me, it starts there. It's going to be interesting to see what Leon, what the front office response is to, to a game like tonight. Then from there, we're going to the head coach. I just, you know, I told you backstage, you know, and, and listen, they, they, and I know that there's fans that are tough on him. So I'm not saying that, you know, that I want changes or anything, but we are evaluating performance. Nobody survives seasons when you're losing to the worst teams in the in the NBA or in sports or in the NFL or in baseball, whatever sport, right? Like when you're blown out by bad teams, no matter the circumstances, the coach is the first one in line in terms of criticism. This team was not ready to play tonight. And to me, there's just no excuse for that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I just don't understand why – the template coaching was continuing in terms of you were down 20 something Taj is in a game when we're down 24. I don't understand that. I mean, I don't, where I don't is Sims and Taj is my guy. I say this all the time, bro. We don't need him, Tibbs. He's 36. He needs to be break glass emergency when everybody, when you have no options left, you got OB struggling for minutes. You got Sims buried on the bench. Why are we going to ties like it's 2005 every night? Every night. Go ahead, bro. I, I mean, we just saw a highlight of Jericho Sims last night getting a lob from McBride, and he's looking athletic and young and spry, and it's like this yeah. is a type of game. You know who he's looking like, where, bro? He's looking like Jackson Hayes. Right, and and I don't want to hear, well, it's 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 against... It's against the the Milwaukee Bucks. You know, he's it, it, are you going to put Jericho Sims out there or Deuce McBride against Drew Holiday? No, this is the New Orleans Pelicans without Zion Williamson. So yes, I would have loved to seen Deuce get some minutes, uh, Jericho Sims get some minutes. And this is not to say that we would have won the game, or this is not to say that the result would have been different. However, what you do say is, especially when you make certain changes early on, you don't wait to the end of quarters, is you send a little message to your veterans and to your starting lineup that, hey, I also don't have a, a tight leash on the young guys. You guys, too. You guys got to bring the energy. Yeah. And if you don't bring the energy, guess what? I'm not afraid to bring quickly with four, with, you know, seven or eight minutes left in the first quarter. I'm not going to be afraid to make changes early in the second. So, and then you saw the late run, which was a quote unquote fake run, but it was still a spark, CP. Yeah. And that's my it point. It was energy. It to was me, energy. That it spark energy, came man. late. Why yeah. don't you do that a little bit earlier? The game was right. already, first of all, the way the game started, I already knew. I was like, this is not going to be our night, even if we make a run. Don't look Just good. The whole team. Look everybody good. looks looks off. They don't look good. So to me, is 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 that's one of the, the perplexing things about Tibbs, in my opinion, is just the continued template coaching and, and, and not taking risk and, and, and not just making changes earlier to see yeah. if you could just catch some type of, of spark. And lastly, you know, uh, Julius Randle. I mean, listen, and it, I think it's in line with Tibbs. This guy is not responding to your demands. He's not responding to the responsibilities of the season. He's not responding to his role. So if you see that he's not responding, it's going to be interesting to see if they make changes coming up in terms of the way they run the offense, because it's obvious that is right now, this is too much to handle for Julius Randle, right? Like you see the text, 
you know, I don't know why he was getting a tech when we already got a tech right before. Yeah, you, you still see, get a technical you foul see going Kemba into picks the half. Up a tech after I understand fouls. Brandon Ingram, Mr. Free Throw, but that's not the point. Right. The point is leadership. It, it, it's timing. Yeah. It wasn't the proper time. Like, we get it. It was a blown call. You were right. They, I saw the replay. But your team, we already got a tech. I think yeah. it was Kemba that caught the tech. Kemba got foul. the tech. So why? Randall gets a buzzer beater, and you still want to beat up on the ref. And those are the moments, CP. We've seen that. We've seen examples earlier in games when, you know, to the crowd that says, well, he had a, con a career year because of there was no fans. Randall gives them evidence when he behaves that way, when he doesn't show energy, when Can't he's it, looking at a teammate the wrong way after they missed a rotation, but you missed the rotation to play before. Right. 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 <laughs> and you don't look at yourself. So uh, to me, it's, it, it started the front office because the roster's the roster, the head coach. And then you got to go with Randall after that. No question. No question about it. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you, boys. We in here, man. I, I was almost going to cancel the show. I was going to detonate this show, man. And just go watch, I don't know, some CP, Seinfeld reruns or something, man. I was tight. told me, JD, man, you want to run the show? Because I, I don't I know. was tight, bro. <laughs> I was tight, man. Honestly, man. Honestly. After that Timberwolves game, bro, I expected energy and effort so much so that I, that I chose all overs on, on prize picks today. I, I thought everybody was going to come out guns blazing. I had Julius over one and a half threes. I, the RJ two and a half free throws hit. We knew that was going to hit. I even had Kemba over 14 and a half because the Pelicans will give that to you and give up points to the point guards. And I figured Kemba would come out to play too. We got nothing, man. But this is this is why we are where we are, 22 and 24, is because you don't know what you're going to get from anybody on any given night. You had 15 points combined between Julius, Kemba, and Evan Fournier. 15 points combined against a 17 and 28 Pelican team. This isn't uh, uh, the juggernaut Warriors defense here. This is just a team that wanted to come in and play with energy and play with effort for their coach, Willie Green. Once again, we made another guy a star tonight. The uh, the the Ish Smith uh, Nick Killer Award of the night goes to uh, Jose Alvarado, Brooklyn's own. Six to nine from the field. 13 points. Was out here schooling everybody, including quickly. Step right on up. Step right on up, right? So so the baton was passed from Connaughton to uh, 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 Zeke Naji to, to this guy. Yeah, from Ricky Cole Anthony, Rubio. Ricky Rubio. You know, the, the baton is just getting passed around. We'll make you famous. Who's next? So now the Brooklyn kid, and of course, uh, you know, his people had spike seats. So it was a tailor-made night for him. Wanted it more, bro. Wanted it more. And, and you know, you, you talked about it, the, the lack of athleticism on this team got exposed over these last three games. You had the Hornets, the Timberwolves, the Pelicans. All average to mediocre teams, but the one thing that they do great is they get out and run. And the one thing the Knicks have been trending badly in is turning the ball over and giving up fast break points. On the same thing again tonight. This Pelicans team is ninth in the league in, in, in fast break points. Tonight they had about 15. 14. You're playing right into the strengths of these teams. And 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 conversely, it's a weakness of ours because we can't keep up. We can't we can't keep up, especially when you have Kemba. Julius oh, Fortier in these lineups. Oof. This is why you this is why tips you, you gotta you gotta get experiment, man. We gotta be you know swapping these guys out interchangeably because we need sparks, man. Sometimes you, you gotta see these guys just don't have it. 15 points in the third quarter, bro. 15 points these guys scored in the third quarter. They are next to last in third quarter points this year. Averaging 25.2. That they average 25 in third. They 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 score 15 points in the third quarter after being down my, four. And that's a great point, right? You have now at this point of the of the season, you have substantial data. You have this is an analytics era. You have analytics. Yeah. 
that tell you that in the third quarter, your starters, your team is not coming out with execution offensively. So why not make some adjustments? Why not have a shorter leash on your starters? You know, stop bringing in these young guys, you know, starting the fourth quarter. Like you have the data there, make some, you know, take some risks. Just make some changes. Uh, Do something. And again, don't mean to say that it will make the difference, that it is the solution. But again, the same thing that's happening that that is being done is not working. And 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 at this point, CP, you know, we talked about it that backstage, you know, the last two games, Kem, I know he had a loose spark in the third, but he's shooting 36% since he's returned. Since Kemba's returned, RJ's just standing around. Yeah. Right? Like, don't we're like back it. to not I don't utilizing like RJ. And I know he had a, 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 a tough game last game, you know, with the turnovers. So he definitely has to be held accountable for that. But at the same time, CP, this is now a team that you are who you are. So if you are who you are, and we're going to see if they, if they make any additions here soon in the next few weeks with the trade deadline, then to me, you have to identify, okay, my best player, Julius Randle, exit him out. He's not responding. He's not playing well. Who is next in line that we can just run the offense through so that I can get information, Leon can get information, we can find out what, you know, what type of responsibility can uh, R.J. Barrett, you know, handle? He's the next most talented player on the team. So I don't understand why we refuse to just give him the keys. And giving him the keys doesn't mean that he's going to respond to it and become a superstar. But what it could do is it, we could just play better. Yeah. At this point, yeah. we, we just want to play better. When we win or lose, we just want to play better. Because right now, the Knicks are not playing good basketball at all. Ter- terrible, man. That they are playing terrible basketball, and bro, you know what? That I'll I'll give Julius, I'll cut him some slack a little bit because even in the first half, yo, he was facilitating very well. I thought he was he was making the right plays, but then you know, second half, the technical was was a bad look. We come out of halftime down by four, and fifteen points, it's putrid, bro. He shoots one and nine from the field, four free throw attempts. Minus 26 on the night. I mean, everybody was a minus, but it's um, and, and it, it, it's, it's going to get tough, CP, because, you know, we were at the game and it's it's actually started during this homestand. The fans are getting a lot more involved in, in these games yeah. in terms of showing their passion, showing their frustrations. We've we've been hearing it the last few games in terms of, you know, them making their their voices felt but also this whole ob randall dynamic you know this is this stretch here is is the stretch that i i haven't heard it all season but now these fans are chanting ob all the time if randall's at the line which i think it's it's a little too much when randall's on the line you want to chant ob i get you want to chant ob when you know when substitutions are happening or in the midst of the game you know and when you're talking about a fragile team you don't really have that that leader it's going to be interesting how this affects the team I think is already affecting Julius Randle, and I think it's no a big question. reason why he's 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 having the season that he's having so far. And I think it could get worse if he did if things don't get better here soon. No, no doubt about it, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. We got uh, climbing up on fourteen hundred people on the check in, man. This is Nick's post game live presented by Prize Picks. Uh, let's get those likes up. Subscribe to the channel, number one show for the fans by the fans. Whether you're a Knicks fan, NBA fan, there is nothing like it, man. So definitely get involved. Call us up. We want to hear from the fans tonight. You can hit us up on the Knicks Fan TV Discord, or you can uh, call us up the number six five seven three eight three. 1509 is the number to call. Knicks lose at home to the Pelicans, man. Oof, to the Pelicans. 102 to 91. Couldn't even break 100 over this team. Uh, Rick V in the chat said Cam Reddish is going to uh, request another trade. <laughs> it's getting bad out here. We may not see him. We man. may not see Make Cam. His debut. Cam wants out. Uh, I, I, I will say this. I, I swear he better get bit at CP. Yeah, there's no yeah, at this yeah. point, man. This team is what two, three games, whatever they are under five hundred. There is no reason. There's there's no justification. There's no evidence in front of you that should suggest that he can't come in here and get the opportunity that he desires. That's yeah. why he wanted this opportunity. Again, uh, he has a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's another thing. I think fans need to chill with the expectations because 
I don't think you're going to see Cam's development until next season because it's tough for a young player to be traded in season and just run into a different environment, a yeah. different system, a different team, and you just expect him to take the next step right, right. in game 48 of the season. Yeah. It doesn't happen that I would way. Temper he needs I would a temper full off season yep. with an off-season regimen, a workout plan, and then next season is, I think, when, full you, when you may see you know, big improvements. You full just hope season. you catch lightning in the bottle with him. But I hope he gets the opportunity. Yeah, in the no doubt season. about it. No, no question about it, man. 1,500 people on the check-in. All right, let's hear it from the people, man. Let's hear it from uh, – let's go to Ari, man. Ari to kick us off. Ari, what's cracking, man? How you feeling, bro? Oh, my God, man. Uh, I, I don't know, dude. Listen, you know, I, I, I'm feeling mixed feelings because ultimately I think this is a good thing that's happening right now um, yeah. because – at the end of the day, as long as this front office knows that we can't compete right now, which we obviously, I mean, it's, I'm just shocked that it takes people 40 games to realize we can't compete. But, you know, as long as the front office knows that we can't compete, at least they won't make a stupid sell the farm move to bring in an all-star. Yeah. So I'm okay with taking all these L's right now just so the front office doesn't do a disastrous move and mortgage our future to make a win-now move. It would be a lot worse if we were on a winning streak right now and then they just traded – you know, quickly OB Grimes, like four first round picks for some superstar just to get knocked out in the first or second round. So ultimately, I think it is a good thing in the broad spectrum of things. But here's what I want to talk about, dude. First of all, not everyone on the Knicks had a, a, a minus tonight. OB was a plus 15. Uh, Grimes was a plus 10. Quickly was a, a plus 15. But you know who had the lowest plus minus on the team? Randall. You know who had the second lowest plus minus on the team? Fournier. All right. Listen, at the end of the day, man, if you look at like, I'm just, it's so frustrating for me to see people because last year I was the only person, the only one who said sell high. And the most frustrating part about this whole Randall thing is that they didn't even have to extend him, man. They didn't have to extend him. They could have let him play out this year and show that it wasn't a fluke, man. And I don't understand why I get so much flack for that. It's ridiculous. Why would you take a why would you rush a move that you didn't have to rush? It doesn't make any sense to me, dude. It's ridiculous, all right? And you know, I, honestly, man, like this like this guy is not only is he playing terribly, he's blocking the development of RJ. It's like what J D says. Why don't we see what RJ could do? You know, it's not that he's just playing bad. He's blocking the development of the young guys because he gets all the usage run through him, man. It's ridiculous, dude. And, like, the worst part about it is I have to hear people on the freaking Twitter telling me that these guys are on team-friendly deals. Stop. Can we stop saying team-friendly deals? All right? This guy has four points, like, five games this year. This dude had four points, all right? Like, that, yeah. like that's 10% of the games. He hasn't even had du able double digits. He's shooting one for eight. One for nine, turning the ball over, missing mm. free throws, getting it like ruining the whole vibe of the entire thing, man. It's, it's yeah. disgraceful, right? Like, I, I'm just, I'm over it, bro. I'm over it. This is what we have, like, at the end of the day, it's not about who's right and who's wrong. Like, listen, the front office made really good trades. I like the reddish trade. I like the way they're drafting. Free agency was a disaster. They're, none of these are team friendly deals whatsoever. No, they are. Hopefully I disagree with you on that. They, they definitely are. I disagree well, with you on that. All right, whatever. I, hopefully they sell some of these vets and build around the youth and make development moves instead of trying to win now because it's obvious we can't win now, man. Yeah. And it's just frustrating that I was the only one who said this, and everyone threw me out to the wolves last year saying, oh, you're crazy, Ari. You're crazy, Ari. I'll get off the phone in a second, CP. Give me one second. Let's just, let's just talk about this for a second, right? I'm crazy, all right? Julius Randle's three-point field goal percentage his entire career. His first year, his first year, it was, where is it, 27%. His second year, another 27%. His third year, 22%. His fourth year, 34%. His fifth year, 27% again. Then he has 41% in a COVID year with no fans in the stands, and people decided to give him a contract on that year when you have seven years of evidence saying he can't shoot threes. Bro, this guy's shooting 41% from two, all right? From three-point range, he's shooting 31%. He has the lowest plus minus on the team. And I'm hearing he's a team friendly deal. Nonsense, bro. I'm out. Peace. Ari with the smoke. Rate that call in the chat, man. How you guys feeling right now? One through five. One being trash, five being facts. 
Ari was about business tonight, man. Set the tone. He did. He set the tone. That's why I went to him first. Because I had yeah. an idea that he was going to come out guns blazing. You know what I'm saying? You got to be selective with the calls. We want energy. Like we want the Knicks to come out with energy. I knew Ari was going to bring that energy tonight. I mean, listen, we we, 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 we won some games. <laughs> Man, it feels like so long ago we were just talking about RJ taking the next step. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like what what happened Sorry. to that, man? Sorry. Remember what happened? You know, Welcome I, back, I, Kemba. Hey, when when you know when Kemba returned, I said, you know, we were at the game and, and you know, we talked about that. I was like, yo, it's gonna be interesting, CP. I think that is the biggest storyline. Even if Kemba plays well, is how will this impact RJ's, you know, the way that we utilize Yeah, no you know, question. We still had, you know, I think he was up there in the teens and points, but it's not about the stats. It's how did he get, how did he get it? Is, is, is the role that he's going to have now consistent with the role that he had that got him through the stretch where we were in the middle of saying, Oh, he, you know, he's arriving. Like we finally got something here mm -hmm. and now he's back to me. He's back to being a complimentary player. And that's what I'm saying at this point. Do you just say, you know what? We're the not good with, enough. The for heck that, with bro. everything else. We going with RJ, and whatever the result is, the result is, to. at least gives you enough of a sample size yeah. so that you, as a front office, you understand how what's best for your number three overall pick in terms of the future. Is is he going to be best as a three and D player, or maybe does he have more skills that we're not utilizing, and maybe that helps because you know if if RJ is the RJ of you know, before Kemba returned, then maybe Jalen Brunson is a, 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 a an attractive option. But if RJ is going to be the RJ of the last two games, then maybe you do have to get a De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you do have to wait See, the and get, you know, an upper echelon point guard. Because So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think the way that your young players play could give you enough of information to allow you to, to see how is what what is best, the best way to, to build the future of this roster. You got to give him the keys, bro. He's your number three pick. There's no reason not to at this point. We're not good enough to have him just play supporting cash role. We got to give him the responsibility and see if he could run with it. You know what I'm saying? At least mentally, you know, he can. Julius is cooked. And, and that that's nothing, you know, again, it's hard, man. And, that you know, it's not to just sit here as we sit in our chairs and 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 speak on this. It's a very difficult thing that, that, that you know, he has on his shoulders. And there's a lot of pressure that comes with it. There's no doubt about it. It can't be easy to, to be hearing booze, and of course he wants to put, to play well. You know what I'm saying? But he's just not. It's just not an easy thing, man. It's a lot of expectations right now. I think the whole team is playing on, on, under pressure, man. Uh, my guy Blockness came to play, though. Let, I mean, let's go to the positives. This was one of my uh, things to watch. Obviously, with Jonas Valanciunas coming in the game, uh, Pelicans being one of the top offensive rebounding teams in the league. I wanted to see how Mitch was going to match up with Valanciunas, how Mitch was going to be out there defending. Uh, this was another solid game for the Blockness Monster, man. Double-double, 17 points, 15 boards for Blockness. Six or seven from the field. I thought Mitch was good tonight, man. I thought he played well tonight. What would you think about Blockness Monster tonight? Yeah, and if if he if he would have hit at least two, maybe three more, instead of five of ten for the free throw line, he goes seven or eight of ten. Your boy has twenty points, right? It's twenty there. points, you it's know, twenty points. And uh, and I also, you know, I, I'm not the the biggest plus minus fan. Yeah, because um, I think it's it's, it's a team oriented stat. Sometimes it's a, it's a night to night stat, and right. not, at times it does say something. At times it's a little misleading. But I do think it is notable that from the starting five, everyone is minus 26, minus 24, minus 21, minus 22. He was a minus, but he was a minus one. Yeah. yeah. So kind of goes so to show you, that, you down, know, the impact that he had when he was there um, on the court. And, you know, he had a tough matchup the last game. You know, we, we talked about it. You know, Carl Anthony Towns, Mitch Robinson has, you know, shown some 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 struggles against you know, stretch fives or, or, or big men, you know, big men that can shoot the basketball. So, mm -hmm. you know, he had a tough night with foul trouble. You like this response from him and you want this to continue. So, and, and he was a little bit laboring. I don't know if he, I don't know if it was a conditioning or he had something going on there. I saw him yeah. laboring a little bit on some possessions, 
Um, but overall, uh, positive game. Uh, he might be the only positive of the team tonight. To no honest. question. No, no doubt about it, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, let's get those likes up. Hit that thumb th thumbs up button for you boys. Nick's post game live presented by Prize Pick. CP the franchise here. My guy JD Sports Talk on the other side. Uh, let's salute some of the super chats that have come in. Shout out my guy Paul Robinson drops a $20 super chat. He says we have to break up the Julius Tibbs connection. Fire Tibbs, the next coach. <laughs> will play those who deserve minutes trade Julius Tibbs will not have a favorite and will coach with no politics the roster isn't bad it's politics <sighs> CP we almost got 2,000 in the chat on the law so that tells you everyone is engaged it's passion it's fire they everyone fired is tonight. frustrated they fired up tonight man they fired up man this is the number one show for the fans for the by the fans for that reason this is Nick's therapy this is where we get together have a meeting of the minds air out our grievances and, and get it proper man shout out young Kobe he says Miles McBride had more on six 16 in the G League than 48 Kemba and Randall combined he can at least take care of the ball I know we talked about trading Rose but he was the vocal leader yeah, we definitely need a rose tonight, you know. And, uh, yeah, McBride did have 16 assists in the G League, but it's it's, it's very hard to, uh, you know, say. It's it's very hard to, to glean anything from G League performances, honestly. It's good to see them getting out there and getting some run. Good to see the highlights, but it, it's very hard to, you know, make that determination that they're going to have that that success at the next level. But you still want to see McBride. No, no question want to see McBride. Yeah, because... Uh, you know, obviously, the the biggest thing with G League is the difference in in, in talent. No question. But also in G League, you know, you have players coming in and out between players that get sent down and called up. So there's no real game planning in right. G League games. You know, you just go and you play. Whereas the difference, you come to the NBA, there's a scouting report available on you. There's game plans. You know, the coaching staff they're going through. So you know, everybody's prepared once you enter the game. And obviously, the level of competition is at a whole different level. So, you know, it, but you, like I said, tonight, <laughs> you got Taj in the game with 24. Why? You're down 24, you got Taj. Why? Game, I don't understand. And that's I, my I, guy, but he's out there getting filleted by Jackson. Has no idea where Jackson Hayes is at. Why? And then and, and the, the thing is the, the traits of these, of the end of, you know, of these draft picks, this grittiness, hustle, energy. Like, you know, you at least are going to get that. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, Obi has had a tough year, but you at least know you're going to get that. You're going to get some energy. You're going to get hustle. So that's the least you're going to get. And that's the biggest one of the biggest problems of your starting lineup. So when you're down 20 plus points, God, take a risk. They, they made a they made you got you caught a little spark there yeah. at the end. And it was too late because you went to it too late. Maybe if you would have done in the first half, maybe your starters pick it up, bro. But. That never materialized. My thing is, for a team like us that never gets out in transit, it's very rare that we get out in transit. We had nine fast breaks points tonight. You have Taj out there who's not a rim protector. Okay? He is not a rim protector. He's never been that. Never been that. We're 27th in the league in fast break points. Maybe, just maybe, you throw Sims out there. Maybe he pins something on the glass and we get off to the races and get some easier points on a night when the offense can't get out of its own way, bro. And maybe it doesn't type, take maybe much that type of to get the garden going. Right. You know that. Maybe it's that doesn't type take of much. spark. Maybe it's that type of spark. <sighs> Let's go to RJ. Let's hear from RJ. This was uh, RJ speaking on tonight's loss. Let's see what young Rowan had to say here. Let's see what he had to say. Yeah, no one likes to lose. You know, no one likes to lose, but at the same time, what can you do? It happened. It already happened. We can't dwell on it. Just got to watch the film and, and go and just fix it and not let it continue. All right. So that was, uh, that was all. And let, and, let me, and let me say this, CP. Yeah. You know, anybody can say whatever, you, you know, you know, people that don't like RJ, uh, when you say something decent about him, you know, they think that that you're you're not holding the young guy accountable. Yeah. I mean, I know this. <laughs> I certainly don't because uh, I thought last game I thought he was the number one reason, honestly, why we you know, while we lost the last game was turnovers. I thought he had a bad, terrible game. But props to him for going up there and taking the heat. Do you know this is the seventh straight game that Julius Randle 
just was a no show on the post game. Like, I, I, I understand this is a tough business. Um, and maybe role players, maybe that's not your job to, to, to meet the media because, you know, at the end of the day, for the most part, the media fans, they want to hear from your top, you know, of the roster players. But seven games, come on, Julius, you know, and I get it. It's tough. Who, who wants to talk? You know, I try to put myself in that position. But, man, you got RJ going up there. And he has to take those questions. Like I would have mm. at least liked for you, at least one of these. You had you three losses at home. Yeah. And you're not answering. You, like you're not talking at all in any of those three mm. losses. You know, I get it, and it happens a lot. Russell Westbrook. I, I didn't just even did it. realize you know, that. You had a tough loss, he, and then the next loss, you don't want to hear it. That's yeah. fine. But yeah. three straight losses at home, a critical stretch, and you're not up there answering some questions, giving us some some you know some quotes or anything. Just you know being a leader. I mean, he's, he's coke, listen, man. He's coke. I, I don't want to say too much because you never know, but it's, 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 it's tough, man. He's like I, 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 I'm not, I'm not too, too happy about that. That was, that was one thing with Melo, man. Even, even when we were losing, uh, for the most part, he would show up, you know, for the most part, he would show up and, 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 and speak to the media. I didn't even realize that, uh, that, that Randall dipped off tonight. So. Yeah. Frustrating, man. Absolutely frustrating. Let's, let's go to the discord. Let's go to uh, Ozzy Mozzy in the Discord. Go ahead and unmute your mic if you can hear us. Ozzy Bozzy, let's go. Hello? Yo. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Let's go. Listen, man. We got cooked by some Spanish trap artists, man. This is All right, yeah, out of here. All right, let's go to uh, Dave G. Dave, what's good, man? Unmute your mic. Hey, what's good, guys? Can you guys hear me? Yep, loud and clear. What's going on, guys? Hey, first thing, shout out. You guys love the show, man. Hit the like button. Let's go. Get the likes up for your boys. Couple things. One thing, man. I think, you know, we got to get Rose back. I think a healthy Rose, I think things are way different. You know, that third quarter, you got, there's just no offense. Just no offense. You get Rose back, you got offense. Mm -hmm. He he breaks down the defense. He's going to get buckets. He's going to make something happen. And then not having Noel, man. He's played in what, like 15 games this year? Like, you got Taj on the court because Noel's nowhere to be found because he can't – he's fragile. He's nothing but glass. Yeah. So, I think I think the front office – I mean, I, everybody's been hearing these Jalen Brunson things, man. I think the Knicks have log jams at the guard, especially point guard, and the wing, man. Like, you got, you got Kemba, you got D-Rose, you got IQ, and you got Burks all playing point guard. They can't all get minutes, and if they're all playing minutes, then you're undersized. You can't play defense. So the Knicks got to figure out a way to get Grimes, Reddish, RJ, and Rose on the court when Rose gets healthy. And I think the offense is way better. Defense is a problem with with Rose, but if you got Rose, RJ, Cam starting, you can switch a lot. You can do a lot with that lineup. I mean, everybody's thinking of the negative right now, man, but I'm telling you, I think Grimes is a baller. I think he can play. I think IQ can play. I think we got a lot of young guys who are going to get – we got to we got to get them playing. I'm so with you guys on the Sims thing, man. Like I get it. He's young and Tibbs doesn't like the young guys. You can't rely on them on defense or whatever, but you got to do something, man. You got to do something. So it's it's disappointing, but at the same time, you know, two games under 500 to get Rose back after the trade deadline last year, we went what like 20 and 10. Yeah. So I think I think the Knicks front office might make a move before the deadline, get Rose back, see what happens, you know. I think we're at least fighting for a playoff spot. Or play in spot, and then you just you see what happens. You just got to keep building. Just got to keep building, boys. All right, appreciate the call, Dave. Th- thanks for coming on, man. Definitely appreciate that. Appreciate you guys. Um, you know, just th- this is this is why, man. Like when I mentioned it the other day, and people are like, "Yo, you wildin'? I'm just not sure they're gonna be that aggressive at the deadline, unless it's for like a blockbuster trade. Like, I don't see them, you know, it's either a blockbuster or they're trying to sell at the deadline. I I don't see it, man. I, I don't and, see it, bro. And Ian Begley said today that he doesn't think unless something catastrophic, which <laughs> this could be the beginning of that. Yeah. He says unless that happens, he doesn't see the Knicks as sellers at all. Okay. So, you know, it's either they're going to make a move. Right. You know, if they're in the market, they're going to look to buy. 
uh, to add to the team or, or change something up to, you know, loosen up some of the log jam, unless something catastrophic happens. He doesn't even see them at all being sellers. Um, but there's enough games now with this stretch that you never know. I know when Ian Begley said this this morning, I don't know that he thought we were, <laughs> we would get smoked tonight. Right. Um, so we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there, but you know, to piggyback off your point, CP, that's the thing. If, if they don't do anything and they're counting on Rose coming back healthy, which I do, I think IQ is missing Rose a lot. IQ struggling. Big time. Big um, time. They, they, it's, it's another thing like tonight. He's, I'm not sure why you you're asking him to run the offense when you have Burks next to him. Not that Burks is running the offense any better, but quickly is really struggling in that struggling, role. Struggling, man. Yeah, he's um, struggling. He's not shooting well, and so I think he's missing Derrick Rose a lot. Derrick Rose allows him to be off ball, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's his best role moving forward. But if you're not gonna make a move, CP, then you just got to, you have to look at in house what you have, and again, you have to identify. What is the best course of action moving forward on the second half in terms of us getting the best out of this roster? It's not, it's not going to change. You're the head coach. It's your, that's your job. You have to figure out what's the best way. No and in my opinion, you have, to put, you have to put Cam in there and see what he has. But, the, but number one, you have to give the keys to RJ. Have to get, and, and, I, mm-hmm. and, and I think it's at a point. Where I think Julius actually welcomes it. I think Julius wants <laughs> to say, might, bro. "Yo, he just take might. the keys, bro." Yeah, I, it's all I, yours. I can't take this it's anymore, yours. man. You take the keys. No backseats, man. No backseats. You might be right on that, man. You, you absolutely you know? might be right on that. Uh, so, to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boys. This is Nick's post game live, presented by Prize Pick CP the franchise here. Hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. Uh, if you guys are, make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, share these videos. That goes a long way in supporting us. Uh, the, the monetary donations don't hurt as well. We definitely appreciate everybody who donates to the show on a nightly basis. You know, we definitely put in work here to, to make sure that we give you guys a great show, win or lose. So, uh, definitely appreciate. Appreciate everybody's support there. Shout out to Brandon Guest, Fight Out Super Chat. He says, I had to turn my TV down. Randall's jump shot had the garden sounding like Chicago. <laughs> Hashtag New York Bricks. Chris Dada says, crazy. I'm sick and tired of this. Please blow it up and start fresh. We are slow and predictable. Cam needs to get heavy minutes immediately. Jeff E. Hooden says, is it Knicks have zero identity on either side of the ball? Play who plays hard. Hashtag pay Mitch. So, so Jeff is on the uh, the Money Mitch bandwagon, man. Yeah, I say pay him, man. Get, get that man his money. You know? If you guys are new in the chat, uh, drop a hashtag new in the chat right now. We'll shout you guys out. As I said, we definitely appreciate everybody for uh, for calling in. Um, who else we got on the lines here? Who else we got? Let me go to my guy, Eugene from the Bay. Eugene, what's going on, man? How you feeling? No, this is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Losing wait, wait, yo, yo, Eugene, you you on a speakerphone or or uh or those AirPods? Yeah, you sound. Yeah, let me put. Sounded kind of low. All right, better. Yeah, 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 better. Dude, losing to the Pels is unacceptable. It's like it's like a kid failing kindergarten. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. One of the biggest issues that I had with this entire process is I, we need a point. Yes, we need a point guard badly. Mm-hmm. But we need leadership, too. You know, you got people like Tibbs. This guy is making decisions. All of his decisions feel like they're wrong. We got IQ running the point. We got him thinking RJ, uh, um, uh, JR is, uh, is a superstar. We got him playing Taj 20 minutes. He's not playing the youth, even when he's getting blown out by 20-plus points. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't understand the decisions that he's making. I mean, every single time that we uh, go down, every single time that we are losing – we keep players in 20, 30 you know, additional minutes. Like, why are we not making adjustments? I don't understand why uh, uh, Tibbs is a- approaching this. And, and people, like, people are, like, try to kill like, people like Obi. Like, you call him for Obi. When he gets in, he ain't going to do anything. Well, Obi can't. Obi will always be trash without a point guard. He is Amari Stoudemire. Mm-hmm. If Amari Stoudemire was sitting at the three-point line uh, just waiting for three, he would never uh, – he, would, he wouldn't be the player he was. So we got to understand – Something has to adjust on the leadership side. You got Randall moping every time uh, you know something happens. He barely runs up the court. He walks. He's like, like lollygagging. Like where where where's where's the energy? Where's the heart? Where's like the New York grit? And he's wondering why people are booing him. 
Come on, dude. You're yeah. getting booed because you're not bringing energy. If you brought energy and you was trash, people would still be bigging you up. But you're, 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 you're walking around like, like everything is cool. Like we didn't just lose three straight games, winnable games at home. So I don't understand where we're at. And I, to me, I blame Tibbs because you got to get your people ready to play the game. And so that, that, that's all I got. I, I'm just frustrated with, with the leadership, the, the lackluster effort. You know, we got to do something. I don't know if it's it, – I, I, I don't. I hate to say fire Tibbs because, like, we've been firing everybody. You know, they only last one or two years. But, crap, what are we going to – like, I'm, I'm curious. What are we going to do about the leadership piece of this thing? I, I want to hear you guys' viewpoint. Uh, you know, J.D. said something crazy the, the other day about, you know, just putting – if you're going to hire a person like Tibbs, give him the team that he's looking for. And I feel like this is just – you know, we just need, like, eight players who are going to play all 40 minutes that's pretty much what Tim's looking for. So, you know, if we're gonna do something, just give him that, like, or, or, or get rid of him. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just frustrated. I'm just rambling. I'll just let you go. Uh, but man, man, always a great show. Good to hear from you. Uh, and, yeah. and, and you know, Nick's for life still. Appreciate it, bro. Unfortunately, <laughs> hang, hang in there, my guy. My guy, Eugene in the Bay. You know, <laughs> it, it just doesn't seem like anybody on the team right now could even get through to Julius. You know, on the court from a leadership standpoint. I mean, Kemba's a well-respected guy around the league, well-respected locker room figure. I'm sure Fournier has a good reputation as well, but just as doesn't seem like anybody could even, you know, talk to Julius at this point. So I don't know. I don't know where that's going to come from. I think you need a legit superstar on this team, you know, uh, that, that can really get this team in order. I, I just, I don't see it any other way. I don't think it's anybody else on this team. I mean, a lot of guys gave credit to D Rose and Taz for for their leadership as well. So I don't. I, it may not have to be a superstar per se, right? Because like I always look at the Miami Heat example where Udonis Haslam for a decade now has been that guy, and he ha- he's barely played for the last the last ten years. Um, so I don't know. You know, like I said, D Rose and Taz got that credit, but when when you're losing, it seems like everything's falling apart, man. <laughs> so I'm just not sure, JD. And I think sometimes when your best player or the player that has the highest usage or is the focal point of your offense and of your team, even when he's not, quote unquote, a leader, uh, you definitely can't have that player be, you know, a player that's just, you know, mentally not not there. He's not mentally tough. He's not in tune to the game because you can be you can lead by example. And, and that's why I continue to say I'm ready to just make RJ the focal point because then maybe Randall feels a little bit less pressure. You know, the last game, the Knicks won, Randall had 24 points, RJ had 26. And as I mentioned after that post game, that was the only the fourth time this season that they both scored 20 points. And the Knicks are three and one in those games. Yeah. Hello. Can we figure out, can we look at those film? Can we look at that tape of those four right, games? Right. Even the one we lost, we're three and one when they both scored 20 points. Can we see what worked in those four games and see if we can implement Go that? It. Because it's obvious in a season CP of so many, so much questions, and we're trying to figure out which way to go. You got something there that tells you if these if you can get these two guys to play well together, then you have a good chance to win yeah. a game. And I think the way to do that is you got to focus more on RJ and then ease Randall in with him. And then you can probably get both of those guys to play well together. And you might even get, uh, you know, just better leadership from Randall when he doesn't feel he has so much pressure, you know, because this guy now you like we're for it's like we're forcing it now at this point, I feel like because he's not responding and yet we're still demanding from him. So that's why I think it's a coach. And it's a player thing yeah. in this situation. You know, change it up and let's see if the leadership comes in different, you know, from other areas on the team. Got to put the ball in RJ's hands, man. Limitations and all, I don't care. Put the ball in his hands because, like I said, yeah. he's, he's the most, he's your most reliable downhill threat that you have on the team by far. That's, that's not even question. You can't even question that. And tonight, he finished very well in the paint, bro. You know, this despite all everything that was the disaster tonight, you saw RJ. He had a, some a floater going. He had a little teardrops going and hitting a little mid range. He was nice in the paint tonight. Um, you know, got got Mitch with the Gotham lobs. So, I, like I said, I, I think we we can't shy away from that just because Kemba came back. 
Uh, but it, it's something that, you know, this team, this organization has to has to do some soul searching. At. Shout out to um, all hashtag news. Shout out Marco Fabian. Marco's Fabian. What's good? Johnny 35 MM. What's good, Johnny? How you feeling? Team hashtag new. Who else we got in here? Uh, bad sports fan. Salute. So that's Shane Mack from New Jersey. Shane Mack. Long time, man. $20 super chat says worst loss of the season. Tibbs' loss as a coach and Julius' cupcake. Give RJ the keys. Let's get it going. We look for some more hashtag news in here. While I do that, JD, go ahead and uh, shout out some people in the chat, bro. Cameo, I see Cameo here. Hi, uh, hashtag new. Mm-hmm. Uh, always, I'm always starting out, shouting out the mods, TM, Cynthia, you know, the shells, uh, Ari, you know, all all the all the mods. Shout out to Yankee fan forever. C, Gene Shariel, Philip Walker. Paul Quick, Jay from Florida, J Money, Mikey yeah. Jones, Rare Edition, Chad James. Thank you guys for tuning in. Eddie Suarez, Edwin Pierre. Thank Let's you go. guys, and thank you, thank you to everyone that 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 supported and, and came out to the to the last game, the last event. Yeah. It was definitely a movie. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. The, despite the loss, man. You know, the, the the Knicks fan TV, Knicks Omni fan group events are always a vibe. The first one we did was the home opener, man. Me and JD live from Mustang Harry's. We did the pregame show, had the pregame show uh, in person and live streamed. Let's go, and then went to the game. Obviously, the game popped off, but uh, Tuesday night. Against the Timberwolves, we did a pregame shoot around. If you guys didn't see that, we did the play by play from pregame shoot around. Me, JD, Alex Rutars, with Chad Acasta, my guy John Maleka as well. And then, uh, and then post game, we did the uh, picture on the court. And then we, we had people get engaged in, in the group, bro. <laughs> and we caught it live. And we caught it live, man. So you never know what might happen, but it was, it was a great turnout, man. To everybody that came out, definitely appreciate the support okay uh we're gonna go to one more call and then and then we'll get into our prize picks of the night let's go to let me hear from new caller jay i see you jay we may close with you tonight jay so just hang tight i want to get to some new people in here jay jay i see you. i want to get to some new people in here though let's go to um where do i want to go michael from michigan michael what's going on What's up? What's up, CP, JD? Y'all can hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, man. How you feeling, bro? Cool. Doing all right, man. Doing all right. Thanks for having me on. Um, man, I, I got just got two quick points to make. Again, love the show. Hit the mm-hmm. thumbs up for the squad. Y'all Let's know the it. vibes. Um, the first thing I'll say is um, I think the, the major problem with the team in general, obviously it starts with the coach, but I think the common denominator is there's an inequity – in holding people accountable. You know, we've seen Thibs. Obviously, he held, held Kemba accountable off of two handfuls of games. We saw Fournier getting the Alfred Payton treatment for some times. We saw Mitch in and out of the starting lineup at times. We saw him call out RJ in a post-game press conference. The only person he isn't holding accountable is Julius. You know, Julius gets a LeBron treatment for some reason. He's playing point forward. He plays as many minutes as he wants. Dibs is caping for him in post game, protecting him. And the other teams, the other players on the team see that. I mean, when the Kemba thing happened, you saw current and former players all around the league tweeting about how Kemba was being treated. You don't think that um, players on our team see that or players, prospective players that they may look into try to get see that because, you know, they, they don't see uh, players being treated fair, well respected, well liked players around the league being treated fair. And then, you know, then to, to go to Julius, the second point, I think that his attitude has clearly poisoned into other people in the locker room. The Knicks complain after every call. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they, ha- they haven't committed a foul the whole season, apparently. Mm-hmm. You know, they get a foul call. They go to the foul line. They're not focused. Yeah, they're still convert. barking at the ref. They're they went to the line 36 shot. times. 36 times today. Yeah, you know. That's a good point. Yeah, and, and, and they and they hitting like half of them, maybe, yeah. if we're lucky. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's so many times Julius with the line, I, I'm watching with my pops, like, I'm like, pops, you're going to miss the front end. And he missed it, you know what I'm saying? So it's Clang. just like, and, and I think, and, and, you know, and then you, you got all this energy towards the fans. I mean, 
Julius Randle heard MVP chants in the Garden last year. When would he, when would he ever in his career hear an MVP chant from anybody? Right. We caped right. for him. Right. We held it down for the boy. From anybody. And you know, you know, and, and it's like you gonna come at us crazy when you playing like crap. It's like you know, we we respond to what we see, and the, the team's gonna follow your example, and and they're gonna perform accordingly. And so if the Knicks don't get some accountability from the coach, if they don't have players that are going to play with some pride and not let, you know, random people keep coming through the garden having career nights or, you know, borderline G League teams. The one game I went to this year was in Michigan and Detroit where we almost lost to a G League team. And, it, and it's just like have some pride, you know. Don't let random players come into your building or when you go on the road against teams you're supposed to beat. You know, smack them up. And that's the attitude we have last year, and that attitude is gone. And we got to get it back. So okay. you know, thank you all for letting Pre- me speak and call, looking man. forward to call again. But appreciate y'all. Michael from Michigan. Rate that call in the chat, <laughs> man. I feel like that was a good one. Rate that call in the chat, one through five. One being facts, five being trash. What do you guys think about Michael's call? I thought that was a good call tonight. That might be candidate for call of the year. I think Ari's in the runnings for call of the night. Well, I thought I thought Michael's call was good, too. I thought Michael's call was was, was on point. Absolutely. Great, great, great call. Yeah. Ari set the tone. So Ari did set the tone. It's, it's going to be hard it's, it's to, good it's, to ha- it's good to get that call midway. Yeah, right, right, right. It's, it's going to be hard to uh, to beat. But uh, Ari did did set the tone. Shout out to Michael as well. Um, as we say on this show, people, this show is presented by Prize Picks. Now, what is Prize Picks? Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. They have the best Daily fantasy props on the market. More NBA fantasy props than any other prop operator. And what do I mean by props? It's just overs and unders. This is the game that we play on a nightly basis. Myself, JD, countless other fans who show us their winning tickets. And I like to see that even when I lose. Uh, (laughs) But prize picks, like I said, man, daily fantasy sports made easy. You just go to prizepicks.com. You sign up. You enter promo code KFTV on the sign-up screen. That's how you support us. And with that promo code, you're going to get a match, a 100% match on your deposit up to $100. So you don't have to deposit $100, not the requirement, but up to $100. They're going to match your deposit one-to-one. So it's a real good deal, and you get that bonus to play with. And how you play is very easy. You're going to pick whatever sport you want. Obviously, we play NBA a lot, but you can you can mix and match, play NBA, NHL, NFL whenever the games are on and you just pick two to five players and you're going to predict whether they're going to go over or under a given stat that prize picks plays that night so it's you versus the house now prize picks just added in on top of points rebounds assists three points made and free throws made they just added in uh blocks and steals combinator and a points rebound assist combinator so they they added in a couple of uh extra categories for you guys to play with that make it very, very interesting. Now, here's where I went tonight, JD, and uh, probably wasn't the best idea. <laughs> probably wasn't the best <laughs> idea, but but uh, I'll tell you one thing. I did go. I started off with Brandon Ingram going over 21 and a half. I, I just didn't feel like you know Knicks defend wings very well, and I felt like if this game, I did feel like this game was going to be competitive, and that the Knicks would would ultimately win. And with that, I felt like Brandon Ingram was would be on his way to going over twenty one and a half points. Now, shout I'll out to Bi because I thought I thought he had a, a pretty um, masterful game in terms of scoring and facilitating because we just made it look so damn easy for him. But he would finish with, I believe, just sixteen points. So you know the he got foul in, trouble he, killed you there. Yeah, the the blowout and then him getting hurt on the Grimes quote-unquote offensive foul, that hurt me. So I was in double trouble there, so I did not hit on my Ingram pick. Then Pelicans giving up a ton of points to opposing point guards. I was feeling myself, man. I just felt like this team was going to come out with more energy after that loss to the Timberwolves game. And with that, I thought Kemba would have had a better game. So I went over 13.5 points with Kemba tonight, but I did not get that. 
Here's my lock of the night and what I did get. Luka Doncic over seven and a half dimes. He's been an absolute maestro for the Mavs lately. Uh, he's been a better uh, assist man than a scorer lately. So I actually didn't take the Luka points and I didn't jump in on the, on the points, rebound, assist combinator. I just went with the dimes because I felt like against his Phoenix Suns team, uh, he would do very well in terms of playmaking for his team. And he ended up finished with over seven and a half dimes. So I did get that one now i went to threes and uh i went with julius i went with julius tonight man. Uh. <laughs> again again i said you know what these guys have got to come out with a chip on their shoulder after a tough loss to the timberwolves i went with julius over one and a half threes tonight and he didn't even take one so was wasn't a good one was not a good one for Julius. And then the last thing, another lock of the night, I went with RJ over two and a half free throws, and he did get that. So of my five picks, I got two tonight. Uh, the other night, I got uh, three out of five with a push. So I ended up winning 30 bucks uh, instead of 40 when I went for 200. But either way, uh, tonight wasn't one of those nights for me, man. But like I said, you people at home play to win. Play responsibly. Go to prizepicks.com. You can download the PrizePix app. Sign up. Enter KFTV at the promo on the uh, promo code, and you'll get that 100% match in your deposit of up to $100. Uh, JD, how'd you do, man? All right. I got two tickets and one ticket. I mean, I have a chance to go five for five on one, and one I'm going to go have a good chance to go four for five. Mm-hmm. So the ticket that I'm likely to go four for five, I took R.J. Barrett over two and a half free throws. I think as long that's as lock. that continues to be the line on the free throw category, that's a lot for me. Yeah. He hit four free throws tonight, so I hit that. I took Mitchell Robinson over seven and a half rebounds. He has six rebounds the last game, but that was in foul trouble. He's been rebounding the ball well. I hit that. He had 15. I took uh, your boy Julius Randle. 33 and a half under 33 and a half in a new category points, rebounds and assists, which means in those three categories, he has to hit under combined combined 33 and a half. Yeah. And in that stat points, rebounds and assists, he had a total of 17. So I definitely hit that. And, uh, and I have Clay Thompson over 14 and a half points. He has 10 points at halftime. So I'm confident good. I'm going to hit that. It's only like a 10 point game. And then I missed on Jonas. I had him over 11 rebounds. Mm. He had 10. Shout out to Mitch. So if so, uh, he had 10, so I missed that. Um, so that's four out of five there, likely, mm-hmm. if Clay gets uh, five points in the second half. Now, the second ticket, I might go five for five. I RJ, same thing. Mm-hmm. Andrew Wiggins, I took him over 1.5 in blocks and steals together. Blocks and steals. He has two. So I hit that. Under Evan Fournier, 20 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. I thought that was the lock. Yeah, if of I would have looked on that, bro, and I, I would have taken that. I'm like, that's I know CP is going to pay. He's going to take his savings account. He's going to put, he's gonna put it on that. I didn't even look at the Woo! category, man. I, if I would have seen 40 and I would have taken it, bro. Uh, yeah, it was 20 and a half under with points, rebounds, and assists. He had 10. So I hit on that. So that's three Wiggins, RJ, Evan Fournier. And Steph Curry, I took him uh, over 34 and a half Mm. points, rebounds, and assists. He has 25, and it's only halftime. Okay. And then Clay over two and a half three pointers. So we'll see in the second half. All right. All right. As we say, man, play responsibly, but, uh, you know, we have fun playing on a a regular basis. Um, Prizepicks.com, promo code KFTV. All right, man. They they tell me Jay can't wait. I was hoping to close with Jay. I like to close with quality callers. But if Jake can't wait, he wants to get in on the on the Debbie Downer vibes. We'll get him in right now. Jay, what's going on? Yeah, turn it up for your boys. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Wifey in there calling me. She's like, Why you on why you in the living room? To come to the room <laughs> right wife, now. Wifey wanna watch so, ninety day saying? fiance, man. Hurry up, bro. Hurry up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Here's, 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 what, here's the main thing. Here's, here's, here's what I'm trying to go on to. I said I'm not harassing Julius no more. Julius is a clown. We know that. But listen to what Tibbs did. 29 and 53 the first year of Minnesota. 47 and 35 the second year. 36 and 46 back down to earth the third year, right before he left. The Knicks this year, the Knicks last year was ninth in defensive ranking. This year they had 18. 
Tibbs has lost the team. Another example is Jimmy Butler waged war against the Timberwolves when he was there with the whole I ain't playing with with Cat. Let me give me the third string as I could beat them in practice. That was chaotic too. Now we got Julius Randle getting autographs to Kaiden when he's getting washed by 14 by the Hornets at halftime. <laughs> what player you know gets an autograph at halftime from an opponent? Patrick Ewing and Carmelo Anthony would have never did that. That's a disrespect to us as the fans. That's a disrespect to his boss, Leon Rose, Tibbs. You lock in, bro. You lock in and try to get this game. You don't take your son to get an autograph mid-game. That's disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Tibbs is a clown. The philosophy of Tibbs every time has come back to bite him. He traded Zach Levine before he hit his prime. Zach Levine is averaging 25 points a game for the Bulls and balling. He traded him for Jimmy Butler, which is still a decent player at the time, yeah. but you don't trade a Zach Levine for Jimmy Butler. What does he want to do with these Knicks teams? Like J.B. said, it's going to be havoc if you don't play Cam Reddish. I don't see Tibbs playing Cam Reddish, bro. I really want to hope. I really want to play that, pray that he's going to play Cam Reddish and RJ together. I don't see it, man. It's just not in his DNA. He wanted to do everything opposite that we want on Twitter and on this on this Knicks fan TV. He wanted to be a tyrant. You don't play Taj twenty minutes when you got Sims and Jackson Hayes rolling to the rolling to the cup and hitting hitting dunks and dominating. You play Sims. You play the kids to see what you got, brother. It's, it's common sense. It is common sense. Tibbs has lost the locker room, like I said in October. I said this in October. Tibbs completely lost the locker room. He has no command over Randall. He has no command over Kemba. Nobody respects him in the locker room. But he's bulletproof because Leon Rose is his man. If Leon Rose, Leon Rose got to make the decision to rein him in. Somebody got to rein this guy in, man. I got a real problem with the coach. Fizdale was trash. You knew he was trash. We, do, but this tip situation is gonna get real nasty in a little bit, man. It's gonna get real. We got to find a way to get from under Tibbs if we want to really develop ourselves and win a championship one day. It ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? They got to make a decision. Pick a, just pick, pick a direction. Either you're going, you're going to build through the draft or you're going to trade your draft picks for De'Aaron Fox, for whoever's available, uh, Ben Simmons. Pick a direction. Next. It can't be both ways. Mm. Either we're going to develop and build the right way or we're going to, go, we're going to trade for a superstar a A1 talent so we can see what, if we can save this season. But Tibbs is not the guy moving forward. He's flopped in Minnesota. He lost his team in Minnesota. He's doing the same thing with the Knicks. Julius Randle don't respect him. He hasn't even talked to the media in nine games. He don't respect his management. Leon Rose should tell him to get in front of the cameras and explain what's going on. Leon Rose himself needs to get in front of the cameras, like I said before. That man hasn't talked to us in two years, hasn't laid out the direction in two years. I got a problem with that, too. I'm going, man. Peace and love, chat. Jay from Florida. My man about to go watch 90 Day Fiance. He had to come in and roast the Knicks. Rate that call in the chat, man. One through five. How you feeling, man? One through five. Throw that in the chat, man. I see Atl- I see Atlantis in the chat wants to get in here. All right, so here we going to go. I had Tyron Hugh on the Discord waiting. Tyron Hugh, you up next. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Then we'll go to Sir Atlantis. Tyron Hugh, you up next. Oh, is Tyron Hugh ready? You got to be ready for your debut, man. I went to this guy. He's a new caller. Mm. Tyron, Tyron Hugh going once. I thought you said Tyron Lue. I was about that's to what, say yeah, that. Yeah, that's what, I thought, even, that's what even, I thought it was. I'm like, even, even Tyron Lue's type. Yeah, Tyron Lue's in the Discord, man. <laughs> shout out Varun. Shout out to India, man. Love in India, man. Shout out to Varun. What's good? All right, so we got a couple fives, a lot of fives for Jay. All right, so so Jay's a fan favorite tonight. No tomatoes. The chat is clean, <laughs> except for Michael Maldonado. He's always got a couple ready. He's got he's always got a couple ready for CP, Jay. This is this is Jay's environment. We get smoked. Yeah, you know everybody tight. That's this right. Is Jay's, That's right. That's this is true. this is his world. That's true. That's true. All right, Tyron Hugh, man, you gotta wake up. Let's get to uh, Sir Atlantis on the Discord. Let's go. He's been waiting to get it going. Let's go. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, man. Let's go. All right. Hello. Uh, first, I want to say appreciate you, CP and JD, for letting me on the panel. No doubt. And um, Protocol. I'm just going to get straight respect. into it. So, um, first and foremost, I know it's hard to hear right now, but Knicks fans, we have to be a little bit more patient and put our trust in Leon. And first, I, I just don't understand... I'm talking about really Ari specifically and anyone that agrees with his philosophy that we should have sold Randall when he was high. 
all our life, all my life as a Knicks fan, that's all we've been doing, selling our picks, trying to get the biggest target, trying to get the biggest asset, trying to do this, trying to do that, bringing in Carmelo for this. It has never worked out. Mm. Now we have Julius Randle. We sign him after KD and Kyrie and Phil Jackson messed that up. He comes in. He has his breakout year, career highs and everything. First team All-NBA, All-Star. And then people were talking about trading him. How are we going to rebuild the culture? We're going to trade our star player the next year. Who's gonna want to come to a team mm. after that? If the, if that's how the team is gonna treat their players, he's got a point. To the he's playoffs. got a point, Chat. He's got a point for over, for over a decade. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And another thing with Tibbs, everybody's saying fire Tibbs, fire Tibbs. Yes, I do believe that we should hold Tibbs accountable for his substitutions. They are bad, but we cannot fire Tibbs, a man, the coach who brings us to the playoffs the next decade. It just doesn't make he's any sense. He's got a point, we're gonna Chad. Do we're gonna fire a coach and then bring in another coach. That's probably gonna do what. Probably run OB at point guard or Fournier at center. It just I, I just nah, don't boy, understand I don't the it. philosophy. You guys say fired is fired is bringing who and what is he gonna do with the opportunity that Tibbs hasn't done? Tibbs brought us to the playoffs. Of course, I'm a Knicks fan. I'm frustrated with all these laws, but we have to be patient. Leon Rose has shown us that he takes the right deals at the right opportunities. Let him work our time. We always want yeah. results right now. We have to be a little bit patient. Last year we were overing over five point five hundred, but when we got Derrick Rose, that's when we made that playoff push. This year we have Cam Reddish. RJ is breaking out. He's getting into his bag. Ever since that game winner, I've never seen RJ like this. Leon Rose, he goes and he brings in Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish is going to help RJ develop. And we haven't even seen Cam Reddish play yet. It would not make any sense for Leon Rose to go bring Cam Reddish, who, who he said he wants to leave Atlanta, solely for the purpose that he wants to come here and get minutes and have Tibbs not play him. It just doesn't make any sense. Reddish will get minutes, so don't worry about that. But... All of this just fire things and distance and that. This, it, I just I just don't understand it. It just doesn't make any sense. We have to be patient. Leon has showed us that he will make good deals. Wait for trade deadline. We have a log jam right now. We need a point guard. I believe Leon will get us a point guard. But all this trade now, trade is, we have to work with what we have. And what we have is what we will use and figure it out. Yes, hold Tibbs accountable, but do not fire Tibbs. And then go get a coach that might be worse than Tibbs. That's all I have to say. I don't want to hear about this trade Randall. We should have traded him when it was high. It just doesn't make any sense from a business standpoint. And just even trying to rebuild the culture. I'm tired of hearing it. It's ridiculous. Okay. I'm out. Thank you. He's out of there. Sir Atlantis. Go ahead, J.D. Write that him, call you, in the you chat, gave, man. You gave, him, you, gave him some, uh, you gave him some pointers there. I CP. gave him a couple points. CAA and you coming I out? gave him a is, couple is, points. A couple points. Write that call <laughs> in the chat, man. <laughs> My man. You, you, start de- you start defending that call. They're gonna, you know, the CAA TV is going to start. <laughs> Pop it up in the chat, <laughs> so tread read, lightly there. Read that call in the chat. I thought I thought he had a couple of points. I I thought Ori had points. I had I thought Jay. I thought the other side had points. I think this. I think this young man has points. You know what I'm saying? Mm. As I because as I've told Ari, you, it, it it's it's you're not you're not going to get rid of the guy or not sign him after the year he had. Right? You you not yes, there was no fans in the stands. You can't make that determination and just be like, oh, we're gonna let him play it all out. They did not sign him to the full max. It wasn't the two hundred million dollar max. It wasn't the two hundred million. They didn't sign him to the full max. They, that's it's a team friendly deal. It is a team it's, friendly. Uh, Ari's blood is boiling. Oh, it's Every boiling. Time it's boiling is, right now. It's tight. It's team friendly. It's oh, tight. he's going crazy right it now. It is a team friendly deal. It is a it is business that you had to make. It is a deal that you had to make. He had he had earned it at that point. I had no problem with them giving him money. Does he stink right now? Yeah, he does. I'm not. I'll be the first one to tell you that. I'll be the first one to tell you that. I was the first one to say we should be trading him. I said that after the first year. So, but like I said, after the year that he had, I understood why he gave him the money. I didn't have a problem with them giving him the money because he earned that. He definitely did. Now, with the Tibbs thing, do I think Tibbs is going to get fired? No. Do I think Tibbs should get fired? No. Would I like to make some more adjustments? Yes. But I also think that we need more talent on this team. I, I, I do think, yes, there, there are things that Tibbs does that makes you mad. I understand that. But at the same time, Tibbs isn't out there playing. Tibbs isn't out there missing free throws. 
Tibbs isn't out there missing three pointers that are wide open. That's on the talent. Coaches coach, players play. That's what I'm saying. Yes, Tibbs can do things to 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 with the rotations, holding players accountable. I get all of that. But at the same time, we still need a roster of talent, and that is still taking shape. So as the caller said, we got to give it time. Got to give it time in the macro. Got to give it time, bro. Don't look so great in the micro. I get it. But in the macro, you got to give it time to, 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 to marinate. I said it. I say it all the time. Let this thing marinate. That's, that's my two cents on it. Hey, if you're going to, hey, I've always said, if you're going to keep Randall, you know, those those few games where RJ was playing well and Randall was scoring 13 or 15 points, I'll take that, Randall, if it means that he's playing within the scheme. So if the answer is, well, we're not going to move him, you know, we have to give it a more time, then to me, then it goes on the coach to figure out the best possible way. Because the way it's happening now, CP, it's not working. And Ari brought up a good point in terms of bringing up his history of his three-point percentages. Yeah. This, this, he's had like five, six seasons under 33%. Yeah. So he had only one season where he shot above average. So that mm-hmm. the evidence tells you that he's just not a good three-point shooter. So mm-hmm. I don't even know if we should even be surprised by his lack of three-point efficiency this season. So to me, if that, again, we, we talk about analytics era, we talk about evidence, we talk about data, you have that data. So why do we continue to force feed the action in a Randall centric offense? That's just all I, you know, that's, that, that's, that's all I have to say is Green. I'm not saying that he can't flourish here, but if, you know, we need to make the roster better, but then w- what we have now, the coach has to, you know, figure out a different option. Cause it's not working right now. Yeah. Shout out to the rhyme animal, Chuck D $20 super chat. Everybody throw a hashtag P E in the chat for a legend among us. He says, this is the reason why KFTV is needed. Or we'd be destroying our cribs. <laughs> We're not a terrible team. We're a 500 team that could go either way. Randall had a no heart is disturbing. Every second of effort is needed with this team, man. Absolutely. Shout out to Chuck, man. Definitely appreciate the support. And he's right, man. That This is why we are here. You know what I mean? This is why we are here. Uh, okay, let's see. Who else we got here? Um, Tyron Hugh, I gave you a chance. I see King Deej in here. King Deej. Uh, was at the game. King Deej, don't unmute your mic just yet. Let me get to the phones, and then we'll, we'll close with King Deej. Let me get to... Um, oh, I see. Okay, here's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go Muhammad. I'm going to go Angel, and then we'll close with Deej. Uh, and, and then I, I got to get to Doe from BK. Uh, Muhammad, what's good? Muhammad, what's good? Hey, salute, everybody. Um, hit those thumbs up, guys. Um, missed your show, man. Uh, I really, really missed CP when you went on the show. But the guys did a really good job. A couple yeah, of man. Shout before, out CK. Shout out Julio that out. For, for holding it down for sure, bro. Um, look, um, quick takes. Um, mm-hmm. Number one, the Hawks are crap. The Pacers are crap. They've got so-called all-star killers, and they're doing really bad. So head your head, I think the Knicks fan base need to hold their heads high and say, look, we're managing. We're going to get through. I, re- I, I definitely think there's something on the way. If you see those franchises who've got so-called all-star players, they are all-star players. I mean, Trey is Trey, but, and Demonis is Demonis, but they're struggling too. So context is very important. What we need to continue to focus on, as you said, long game, build culture, be winning. Tibbs definitely can do better rotations, but he's playing with, like you said, role players. You've seen CP, you've been consistent on that point. This team is filled with role players, role players. or people who are previous all-stars, I'm not sure what people are expecting with that sort of ingredient base. Yeah. That's number two. And the, and the third well, point the is... Well, the thing is, Mohamed, is, is this is the same team of role players that got the fourth seed in the East last year. You know, it's human nature. You know what I mean? So it's just it's hard it's hard to deprogram that from our memories because you expect them to stay no, on that track or, or ascend from I absolutely agree them. with you. I absolutely agree with you. I guess the other part is I, I don't know if the health issue has been the inconsistencies on available players, COVID and injuries. Like, D. Rose is out. He's going to be out like two or three months, all right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying one thing. Noel's been like a no. I don't even know if he's, where is he? <laughs> where is right? Nerlens? And I don't know if that's sort of playing in. <laughs> so, um, 
I think we just have to grind it through until we get healthy and make a late push and just get in to the play-ins and, and then just get in. I mean, it's just – I think beating up on our players and beating up on Thibs, um, I just don't see the point. I, I think there's definitely change required, but that's mm-hmm. on Leon Rose. He's got to do something, and, and I okay. think, I'm sure he's listening and, you know, yeah. But peace out, guys. Love the show. Keep up. I just say keep positive. My we, guy, we'll get Mo. Through. Always, always on the positive side of things, man. Shout out to Mo in Australia. I think he's that positive, JD, because it's summertime in Australia right now. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it, it, it's good. It can't, can't be all that bad down there in the, in the land from down under. You know what I'm saying? We, we're trying to be here positive the, here. It's brick over yeah, there. Oh, the Hawk <laughs> is out in New York today, all right? Between today and yesterday, it's been Brick City out here. I saw a couple snow flurries. I'm starting to get nervous. You know what I mean? I, for, for for another year in a row since I had my crib, I still haven't got myself a snowblower yet. You know what I mean? I'm I'm still I'm 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 slacking on, on that regard. So yeah, Mo's feeling good, man. Summertime in Australia right now. All right. So so to everybody in the chat once again. A couple more before we wrap up. I know I see a lot of people on on the uh on the queue here, man. We try to get to everybody, man, but uh, you know. We, we got to run, too. Rapid fire. Yeah, rapid fire. Rapid fire. Angel, what's good? Rapid fire. Let's go. Yo, yo, what's good, CT, JD? Yeah. What's good, brothers? What's good, I bro? hope everything's good with y'all. Um, you know, rapid fire. You know, um, listen, at the end of the day, man, you know, I believe it starts with coaching because you got to have your team better prepared. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously the players play, but you got to make the necessary adjustments. You shouldn't be – you know, waiting until two, three minutes in the third quarter when you're down 24 to to take out Julius Randle. I feel like if you move to the bench with six minutes in the third, the bench will have more time to cut that deficit and maybe you bring it to within single digits. But obviously we're talking about tips, right? So, you know, all in all, you know, uh, I'm looking at the games coming up. And honestly, you know, if we play like this, you know, we're not going to win more than two games. So, you know, obviously we got to take it one game at a time. But, you know, again, you know, we, we're going to have to play these kids a little bit more because we're having too many issues defensively, offensively. And, Randall, when you start arguing with Fournier, at, you know, at the end of the half, and then, you know, it's basically just giving him the finger. You know, at the end of the day, like, come on, bro, you're supposed to be the leader of the team. Like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? So that's just, you know, he mentally checked out, you know, and you got to do better, bro. This is New York, you know. You're not going to get every call. But, uh, you know, in the end, you know, it's one game at a time, guys. You know, I know you guys got to get the extra callers, but I would like to ask you guys a question. Um, I don't see us making any serious trades in terms of a point guard because COVID injuries and things like that. But if there is any trade available for a point guard that's realistic, who do you guys feel that the Knicks could probably get to make this team better? Because obviously this was a game where Derrick Rose just – you know, was dearly missed because we need better point guard play. So, um, as always, fellas, you know, thank you guys for taking my call. Always going to support the show. Appreciate y'all. And uh, y'all have a good one. I'm out. Thanks, bro. M- much appreciated. Um, well, we, we talked about – well, let, let's talk about the names that have been out there for, for a minute now. Uh, we, we, we hear Jalen Brunson. I just don't see why the Mavs would, would want to uh, – you know, get rid of him in the midst of themselves trying to make the playoffs, make a run. He, I think he's a key rotational piece. I, I, I don't see that move happening until the off season where it's at least a sign and trade. So, you know, Jalen Brunson's name is out there. It's being bandied about. You're hearing the what about out- a pick and Burks. What about who? A pick and Burks for Brunson. Because remember, I had mentioned to you though. I, I, I get your point, but Dallas has a lot of salary on their books they have Chris Stops still they have they paid Tim Hardaway Jr. he has three more years after this yeah Lucas on a max Reggie Bullock they signed to a three-year deal uh you got Maxi Kleber still on the books next year you got you got the the young guys uh Dwight Powell is but making what, what, 11 why point, would they uh, why would they 11 million well you're saying so you're saying that they would take uh like so if, pick, if you keep Brunson then you, they you, lose you a think they're gonna pay him so now you're adding next year. Now you have another guy with that, multiple oh, okay. years. Got you. That that. And if that doesn't work, then you know Luca Rum like Luca might be upset if you can't find flexible ways to improve the team. So if yeah. you have to get rid of him, I would think they would want another kind of veteran that can help them now. 
Celtics because they're yeah. in that middle thing of that's fair. You know, you still gotta be competitive because of Luca. Yeah. So is Burks and a young guy, or do you do a Burks IQ and a draft pick? You don't know, man. I I can't do all that. Not for Brunson, bro. Not for Brunson. Well, because but if you're the Knicks and you're receiving Brunson, then you're doing it because you're also gonna pay him. Like yeah. you're not gonna right, you're not right. gonna and then you gotta you, pay him. Then you gotta so, pay him. So right. So then you gotta pay him. So then what does that where does that leave? So does it does IQ become more of someone you, you will be willing to lose? I don't know. I'm just I'm just giving you the conversations that are happening in sure, the world. Sure, sure, that's sure. That's it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's that's a tough one, man. That that's definitely a tough one. Um cuz I don't think they want to move Burks, but if they do, it would be something like that. Yeah, you're right, getting right, somebody right. that's going to be part of the solution. Right, right. Man, just you know, the Pacers just need to let Brockton be available, man. Just give us Brockton, for Christ's sakes. I've been wanting this guy in the Knicks for like the last five years, man. Just give us Brockton. You know, that's my target for this team. Um, that we We're hearing Fox. Is he on the table? Is he off the table? There was an article in The Athletic saying he's off the table. It, you know, uh, they had him in the, in the Simmons deal. Philly turned that down. Or was it Halliburton? It was Halliburton healed. What was that package supposedly that Philly, uh, that the Kings were offering Philly for Simmons? It was Halliburton heel and a draft pick, wow. and then they had Fox, someone else in a draft pick. So yeah, I mean, with their smoke, there's fire. I mean, at this point, you're probably going to hear that. Yeah, like in in other words, if the Kings have shopped around Fox a little bit, and then now as you get closer, you start to say, well, you know, we don't want to. We don't want to trade them, but you probably want you want to bait someone. Yeah, just like Daryl Morey just said, you know, yesterday that uh, their demands for Ben Simmons are going to lower now. But it, but then he says he says that, but then he says it is less likely that he'll trade him. Like now at this point, you're going to see a lot of posturing going around because you want to bait a team to you know give it up old to your demands. Give it up, yeah. And but you bag. said Brogdon, I want Brunson. Brogdon, man. I want Brock. Do you entertain Dennis Schroeder on a one-year deal? No, I'm good. Would you be good with a Monte Morris? Yes, I like As him. A, yeah, I would. I, I, I would be good with that. Yeah. Um, Russell Westbrook. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm no just chance. naming names. No chance. I told Channing John Fry, Wall. I remember Channing Fry was like, "You got to go get Westbrook." I was like, "Nah, we don't need him." Uh, John, John Wall. Wall. No, thank you. No, thank you. No. It's bleak. It's looking bleak, bro. It's looking bleak, ben Simmons. Man. <sighs> yeah, I know. Uh -oh. I know. Brogdon's always hurt, man. I know Brogdon's always hurt. Um, uh oh, Ben Simmons. Are, are you changing tune now as we get closer? <laughs> Yo, the options are. You bleak, didn't want to man. do it earlier for Randall. The options are bleak. Oh, Simmons for Randall. I do it. Hey, I, do, I. I even told. I told DJ I would do it. I just don't know if the Knicks would do that. I would do that. I would one hundred percent do that. And and, and 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 gamble with him and RJ coexist. I don't even care. I would do that. Eric Bledsoe? No. I'm, I'm just not. naming guys no. that, that could potentially no. be no. be in discussion. No. How about Colin Sexton? <sighs> Is he even back? Has he even made it back since he got hurt? He's Doesn't been out for a minute. At this point, if you're the Knicks, like if you want him, you just get him. Yeah, he's been <laughs> out for a minute. But put him you, on the side. He's another you gotta pay. Yes, man. you got. That's pay. what I'm saying. I, as soon the Knicks are gonna. That's why I said when 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 Leon makes that one move, that's when I think he's gonna be really evaluated. Yeah. Um, because because at I, some point here, you're gonna get close to someone that you're gonna have to pay. And the Cavs are doing so so well without him. You know what I'm saying? It's like ah, it's it's looking bleak, man. It's looking very bleak. It's like I don't want him to make it. I'm not looking for a trade that's going to get us into the plane. You know what I'm saying? If that's the case, just, just get into the lottery, man, so we can get some real talent in there. You know what I mean? That's that's why, like, I don't I don't see a trade. Me, uh, like, the reddish thing me, is one thing because you, right. you, you, you're you trying to get in on a reclamation project. That's one thing. But to, to just get, like, a mid-tier guy to help you crack, what, 7 through 10? I, I don't know. I don't let even me, know if let, it's worth it, bro. Let me quickly ask you this. If, because I think, and I haven't named SGA, Shea Gilgis mm -hmm. Alexander, because mm -hmm. I just think you you talk about giving up. 
a, oh, a yeah, lot you gotta of give pieces it yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, Sam Presti is going to, he's trying to leave you with no picks. Every yeah. Would you rather make a move for shy, mm -hmm. but you understand you're probably going to give up three minimum first rounders and mm -hmm. maybe a future pick swap. Mm -hmm. So you, would you rather go that route where you're giving up probably two or three young players mm -hmm. and three to four draft picks? Or would you go the De'Aaron Fox route and you have to give up a few more young players, but maybe a draft pick or two? Because I don't think De'Aaron Fox is going to give yeah. the return that SGA would. But no. it's still like you're taking that contract. Now I'm so going would you rather I'll give up SGA more for day. SGA or would yeah. you rather just go with Fox? I give up, like, I is, give up is more the gap between them that day. large to you? Uh, I like SGA way better as an offensive threat. Uh, he's more cerebral. I think he's a smarter player. I, I go to SGA route all day, any day, mm. over Fox. And I like Fox coming in. I did like Fox coming in, but he just hasn't um, he hasn't taken that next step, man. He just really hasn't taken that next step as, as a player in this league. You know, just hasn't he hasn't really gotten much better. I I do I go SGA all day, um, but you know I just I don't see him realistically being available. Because I mean, Pelicans are very well get the number one <laughs> number one pick, and go out and get uh, who uh, Demboya or uh, what's the guy's name from Gonzaga? Um, so it's a tall Chet kid. Holgram? Yeah, him. You know, and you get a little oh, one-two oh, punch. Carroll from Duke. Yeah, right, right. I mean, you know, Pelicans could be sitting pretty. You know, with 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 what's his name going off too? With Giddy going off, Pelicans could be sitting right, man. So I don't I don't see SGA as even being. An example, and, and Kevin Hung in the chat says we could have drafted SGA. <laughs> so, so and the and the reason I ask you that, CP, is because if if you if you if you want to think more long term to the Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell tier, because I think that could be the next line of stars in the future that could become available. Because mm -hmm. I think once Chris Paul leaves, you know he's done in Phoenix. Things may change in Phoenix. Um, I think if you go uh, De'Aaron Fox or SGA route now. And you clean out your your picks, may not have enough by then. Yeah, yeah, so right. You have right. to. That's why. That's why I said when Leon Rose makes that move, he's declaring that's the guy. And now I have to build 100%. around. Him. So he has to get that part right because we have a lot of assets now. But once you give them up, it gets dry out there. No question. You know. No question. <laughs> and 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 I think that's why at least having the draft personnel here, Walt Perrins and those guys, I think that's a positive. That may allow the Knicks to take a risk because then if it's, hey, we, you know, if we have to draft late in the draft every year, you well, trust that's your right job, pick. well, parent. Now you got to give me those role players yeah. that, that we need. No question. You got to give me more, a few more Quentin Grimes. No, no doubt about it, man. No doubt about it. All right. Last two calls of the night. Let's go to um, Doug from BK. Doug, what's going on? Yo, CP, JD, how's it going, guys? What's good, Crazy, man? rough loss tonight, man. Damn. Rough, man. How You were in the building. How was the atmosphere, man? I heard some booze. I heard some some random chants. I heard OB chants, some other random stuff. How was it? I'm going to keep it quick. It was brutal in there, bro. Mm. First quarter, the first thing I noticed is that Mitch is the only one keeping us connected through that entire first, you know, the start yep. five, six minutes of the game. Mm -hmm. And then Taj is the first one off the bench to come and get him. And Taj gives him this look of like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I'm sorry I got to take you out right now. I, I, I feel bad about he it. He feels bad. I've been dealing with this guy kids for 15 years damn near. So, so that was the first thing I noticed. Yeah. Second thing, we all saw Randall, you know, totally lose his mind and have a whole temper tantrum going into the half. Mm -hmm. That cost us a point to start the second half, which I really don't like. Mm -hmm. And then finally, third quarter, Kemba's left out there. To, he's just getting sautéed, man, for like eight straight minutes. He yeah. can't get a stop. Kemba's just having a really hard time, and I don't blame Kemba. We all know the limitations, and Devontae Graham loves to carve us up. Yeah. We all know this. And Alvarado, I don't know where that came from, but good for him. And, uh, you know, New York kid. But, man, the vibe is bad. Obi looks like a shell of himself right now. And I think it's not an issue of Tibbs being a bad coach. It's like the ceiling of these vets is a lot lower than the ceiling of these young kids. And it's just a flip in the philosophy of where we need to be with the limited talent that we have. Like, like if Tiz was coaching the Lakers right now, they might actually be winning some games. So I, I, I don't you. know, I don't know where we're going to go, what we're going to do next. And I, I hate the lack of continuity for somebody like RJ who would have to go through a what, fourth coach in his, yeah. in his, 
young career already, that would suck. But like, man, I, I'm 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 at a loss, man. The vibes were were not good. Right? Mm-hmm. At least I got this Clyde. I got the Clyde Mitchell and Ness. It was a worthwhile investment because nobody who's currently on the roster was uh, worth buying their jersey tonight. Nice. But man, it, it was a rough one tonight. Ah oh, man, well, shout out to Doug, man. Thanks for calling in, calling anytime, man. Definitely appreciate the call, man. Oh yeah, appreciate you guys. All right, that was Doug from BK. All right, these go ahead and uh, I'll mute your mic, man. What's going on? Closing again, third time closing for King D. <laughs> salute, 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 JD, salute, CP, man. Yo, this is why this is why Knicks Fan TV is one of the best shows on YouTube, man. This is therapy for us. I mean, shout out to Orange and Blue family. So, shout out everybody in the chat that's in here. Shout out DJ, everybody. Your, 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 your streak is, is is gone. Hey, it's so okay. That's how yeah, you know it's I'm, a I'm bad night. Freeing. Remember you, you you put out that tweet today. Say you were undefeated when you go to the Nick games. I'm was three that? and one this season, and I <laughs> I might have I might have brought some bad juju, man. I should have brought the sage, JD. I should have brought the sage. But listen, it was an man. arena report. How was the atmosphere in the garden? I, I'm gonna shout out Doug, the last caller, man. It was brutal in there, bro. And everybody mm. in the building, the minute the ball tipped off after the first two points, once it got to six four, you just felt the shift, man. You felt. And I, like you just felt the energy that they they look like they were sleepwalking guys mm, like yeah, I, yeah I was they look like they were sleepwalking guys like I just got it that's the that's the word I was saying all day in 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 the seats seat uh, sleepwalking uh, shout out to the fan right next to me in section one fourteen he is the man that started the OB chance not me I nice. see a lot of people shouting me out in the chat nice. it was not me he was a part of my section he got the crowd into that OB chance and like Doug said the same thing with with Taj looking at Mitch. It was brutal watching Obi. If you look at at Obi on the bench, man. Ninety seconds. Energy's gone. It's just all all buzz stuff. But I just want to say, like, I hear a lot of fans calling, and, and like, I hear, I I love the passion of everybody. But I gotta be brutally honest, man. You guys are talking about star players and how would it look if a star player got traded after one year? I got a question for those same fans. How would it look mm-hmm. if a star player quit on his team after one year? Because after one magical ride, man. Randall, Randall, this is a big fact, a big NBA rumor. Randall has this policy of quitting after getting paid, man. In New Orleans, the extension in LA, man, he has this 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 big little rumor of quitting when when a player when when a player gets paid. I mean, well, that, I, that's different. I mean that's just New York, man. The money weighs him down all the time. We always we, yeah, we've been yeah, saying but, that for but, years, but, bro. But, but disregard the money. It's not even about Randall getting paid. I'm happy when any when anybody gets paid. Mm-hmm. It's the effort level, bro. If you're there, it's, it's a little different when you're in the building, people. When you see Randall not crossing the half court line, that's where the booze is coming from. Because you know that he can. You know that he could give you that energy. But it mm-hmm. looks like he doesn't want to. Shout out to RJ and Mitch, man. The RJ Hive, the Mitch Hive. Without those two, this would have been a 50 sure piece. Up. They were yeah. dying by themselves yeah. in that yeah. first half, yeah. man. Dying. Yeah. Dying. No question. And when Ari, when Ari and Jay from Florida say things about it, it messes up the development. It's not about Randall's game. It's not about how he, how, it's not about Randall being on a team. It's the effort level. Yeah. You're yeah. showing the young guys as the vet and the best player on the team. That you're just laying it down, like you're just yeah, yeah. you're just saying I'll I'll do this another night. He's on point. That's a, that's a great point. It's a great. You're point. doing this another night. So I understand everybody saying how would it look, man, but you can't defend something that's defenseless, man. He's he's not he's not. Yo, CP JD, I counted five times in the first half where Randall ain't across the half court line, and you know what he did it in the last game in a, in a thriller game. He he was arguing with the ref and Kemba passing the ball in the last game. Uh, and, and, and then he got a foul <laughs> call, but he went back to argue with the ref again. So it's like the effort, man, the focus level. Shout out. Like, it's bad. It's bad. That's why we keep talking about it. It's not about bashing a star player, man. We just want effort. That's all we want. Yeah. That's all we want. And that's I just hope that they this this stretch, they're doing this at the wrong time. I'm about to hang bad up. Bad timing, doing bro. Bad timing, man. We got We got one more game on Sunday against the Clippers. I'm not even going to talk trades. I'm not even going to talk Cam, man. Randall just got to step it up. You can't have four points and look disinterested in the game, man. He looked All disinterested facts. the minute the game started. All so facts. shout out to the Knicks family, man. Peace and love. Keep repping the team. I, I just wanted him to do better, King man. Just Deez. do better. Did you, uh, did you go to the game in your Knicks fan TV gear? Uh, I had the orange hat on, but I did not have the KFT. I did not get it in the mail yet. All right, let's I get him not... up out of here. All right. Thanks thanks for the call, King Deej. On that note, we're going to close the show. <laughs> He was trending towards a five, J.D. 
Yo, CP, you got the, you, 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 you got the quick trigger tonight. You're not oh, playing no I'm, games. I'm quick trigger. I'm quick trigger tonight, man. I'm tight. I'm aggy about the loss. I'm tight about the loss. And Deej, we give him the closer designation. Three nights. Three nights. And he doesn't even show, he doesn't even represent us at the game. He tweets you out early before yeah. he goes to the game to let us know yeah. that he's undefeated. So, you know, and come on, kid. I'm not having that, man. Deej calls in. We give him airtime every night for free. We charge him nothing. It costs him nothing. All right? The brand of Deej is very large right now. My man could go out and, and sell anything right now and be caking. There's a fee for that closer room. Yeah. You're getting it for free. Yeah. It comes with a price. It comes with a price. Now, shout out to Deej, man. Shout out to Deej. Uh, just gotta have fun. Listen, man. We, we, <laughs> listen, we, we, we're losing a lot of games. There's more to come, especially on this West Coast trip, man. You gotta have a good time, man. You know what I'm saying? When you're doing the show, you always gotta have a good time and have a laugh. Shout out to Deej, man. Um, shout out to Hoodies Vintage Fight Out Super Chat. He says we don't change coaches if we say we don't change coaches again. But how many times low energy and no changes? Some of this is elementary level. Killing confidence. Hashtag tips ain't it. Del Will sends a super chat says not only did Julius look like he wanted to fight Fournier he came out after the half still drawing with the ref channel that energy properly yeah I mean look the whole Fournier thing is just in the heat of the battle I don't think you know I don't make anything of it but uh you still gotta be I let you slide and I we didn't even talk about him but we'll, we'll, we'll let it rock I mean <laughs> what, what more is there to say <laughs> I'll putrid. trade it for two second rounds. Putrid, man. Putrid, putrid, man. Uh, Irvin Vasquez says, we need to build through the draft and, and stay the course. We got high off of last year, and now we're stuck with terrible contracts again. Paul Robinson, find out Super Chess says, we're not a 500 team. We're either winning 50 or losing 50. The talent isn't bad. It's not X's and O's. It's bias coaching and a choking star. E crossover says uh, Randall got to go four points and he's supposed to be the thirty million dollar man looking like a waste of cap space. Show some damn effort. Yeah, E crossover. Hang on after after hours, man. We'll, we'll chop it up. Um, Ryan Manuel Chuck D says blaming the refs is like blaming injuries. Tips ain't missing free throws and shots. However, there's zero offensive strategy outside of Julius with the ball. Three MSG L's. Come on, man. Damn. I'm right with you, man. Right with you, man. Uh, Predic in the chat says, what do you think about Mark Jackson as a coach? I don't think about Mark Jackson as a coach. He's never going to coach in the NBA again. Al Diddy, fight out Super Chats. It's horrible effort and focus by the team today, man. Tibbs has done a horrible job as coach this year. I say we stick with him, but he needs to step it up. Cynthia, 10 out Super Chats. says, like Jay said, I have said before, what is the direction, Leon? Tibbs is a win now coach. What is the purpose of letting of getting young talent when Tibbs doesn't play them and uh, and gets them to develop? Well, when you're winning games, you know, you're going to keep trying to win games. And Tibbs has his philosophy with that. And, you know, I think I think the young guys, certain young guys are getting the minutes. Obviously, OB, I mean, obviously, RJ and Mitch are. You want to see Grimes get in there. You want to see Cam, hopefully, when, when he's healthy, he gets in there. And so we'll see. Well, they will let you know what the direction is uh, once the season is over with. I think they definitely will. But to the idea that, you know, the whole team, the whole rotation is just going to be young guys, I don't think that's realistic either. Uh, Del Will says, hate to say, but it looks like Tibbs is losing the team. Very unfocused. Missing free throws, inconsistent effort, like they're turning out his voice, tuning out his voice. Video Maker from Jamaica says, I'm starting to think Cam is injured because, quote unquote, injured because Tibbs doesn't know whose minutes to take. Nah, I think they, they want him to come back when he's, when he's fully healthy. Ari says, imagine checking out after you signed the 117 million contract before you even started it. Think about that for a second. That's our leader. What a bargain we got. Mark Austin says, uh, I'm really not looking forward to a Sunday early game from the Knicks after tonight. Yeah, me neither. Uh, Mateen says it's time to start holding Leon Rose and Scott Perry accountable. They need to address the situation, find a way to trade Randall. He looks more and more like he doesn't want to be here. Hashtag free McBride. My guy Gamba, fight out super chat says Knicks have one of the slowest paces in the league. Julius brings the ball up. How much Tibbs gives him the green light? Stop enabling him. 
Uh, David Greeter says, IQ Noel in Dallas first for Brunson and Kleber. We need reliable point guard play and someone who can spell Mitch, man. Gotta run the offense through Kemba for RJ. Or I, I or maybe says, or RJ. Let Kemba penetrate and kick to RJ. Got it. David Claudio says, get Randall, Evan, AB, and Tibbs out of here. Ugly offense. Florida Real to Les says, this is Randall. He duped us last year. He's back to himself. Split Randall and Obi's minutes. Play the kids, and Randall can't defend fives. Alex F says, Randall is unhinged. I worry he will punch a ref. King Matthew says, we really let Jose Avocado talk crap and go off against us SMH pathetic Tibbs is gonna be Dwayne Casey 2.0 after this season if he doesn't change you said Jose Avocado <laughs> Avocado that's 2128 says the video I posted during the game speaks for me uh, Tibbs and Tunnel Vision have got to go there's a reason I call him a tin man Donna Varga says uh, Randall pounding up and down the court is a disgrace forget basketball dude got out harder by Jose Alvarado unacceptable Young Kobe, if Randall's the leader of the team, we are in big trouble as an organization. I don't even see the team huddling to calm down during crucial times. Good point. Joanna says, send Randall back to the Pelicans so he can thrive in an empty arena again. Bubble Boy needs to go. Sell high and pivot towards (laughs) this year's lottery. Mike's Man Cave says, the biggest problem with this Knicks team is not one player except for Rose is consistent. Not one. Nobody to defend, to depend on game by game. It's infuriating. Absolutely right. Young Kobe says Miles Mc... Oh, I got that one. Jay Blake got that one. Russell Reed sent out Super Chat says Knicks failing like the stock, but falling like the stock market. No athleticism, no ball IQ, no fight, no coaching creativity, no playoffs, face the facts, front office time to sell, play the youth and rebuild. Keith Knight says it's very glaring how much Derrick Rose is missed regardless how much you feel about him. He's the captain of our ship and it's sinking quick. GB says buy out Randall and play Obi. I've seen enough. He wants a buyout. Uh, Alex F answers Ben Simmons all NBA defense and can pass Mike's man cave against us the ongoing problem of the Knicks sleepwalking in the third quarter has to be addressed but just by Alan Hahn uh, John Kim says Leon gave Randall the bag who is selective when he wants to play defense get him out of NYC man Randall can't handle NY trade him for someone please GB says uh, Tibbs so old he coached the Flintstones <laughs> Kenny Gales says, LOL, is just not working, man. Can we give Tibbs to the Lakers and he gets the Vets? We let Johnny Bryan cook. Tibbs got to shoot me 60. GB says, Randall's mentally weak. When our leader's weak, it trickles down to the rest of the team. Also, get tibbs a out of here. Uh, doubles, double 31 0031 Randall Obi Dynamic is hurting the team the team is not winning a championship it's time to make a significant trade sell high on Randall plenty of injured stars available Stephen Ratchet says uh, when Tibbs sat on the other team's benches and was with USA Bowl what did he learn Alex F says real talk CP why can't we trade Randall and four first round picks with Ben Simmons we need to do something drastic alright and that is it so Tough loss, man. 102-91. What are you going to do? Back at it Sunday. Knicks versus Clippers. The last of the home series before they go eight out of the next ten on the road. This is why these three games, these three losses at home so far were so disappointing. Because these are games that we easily could have won against teams that were in our, you know, in our stratosphere. And you, you're looking to go on that West Coast trip feeling good about yourself. It's going to be a lot harder. You know, maybe maybe they bounce back against the Lakers, but who knows? Uh, tonight's show brought to you by Prize Picks. As we said, man, go to prizepicks.com, promo code KFTV for a 100% match on your deposit of up to $100. Also, go to manscaped.com, enter promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. Remember, these shows are available in audio podcast format, all the major podcast platforms. Go to KnicksFanTV.com for tonight's show links in podcast format and uh always check out remy's player ratings player ratings are back man exclusively on nixfantv.com let's support nixfantv.com and nixfantv remy does a great job after every game so remember to go to the site to uh do some do a deeper dive on the game man so we out of here great show everybody once again see you guys sunday number one show for the fans by the fans cpjd we out of here peace